So we're gonna kind of mix it up to start with. And what are you gonna start with? I'm gonna start with a medium action rod with 40 pound braid and some jig. And I'm gonna start with a medium action rod, 40 pound braid, and a vibrating jig. To get started, we're just in a back bay. It's got a little bit deep water, deeper water in the middle. And we're gonna cover going fast. I am not gonna slow down and waste a bunch of time. We're here to find active fish. And if it's tough after a few hours, then we'll slow down and try to pick off some fish. But man, we're, we're gonna cover ground and try to take advantage of some active ones that came in here because of that fast warm up. Let's get out there and see what happens. There. That's a good way to start. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. So this one's a chatterbait. Logan's staying with the swim jig for right now unless one shows up better than the other. <laughs> nice, huh? Yeah. Middle of the bay, not along the edge, so. Yep. Once we get a couple, we kind of get a little pattern going. There's one. Okay, so that's back to back cast out in the middle. So hit the spot lock, hold us here. Another good one. There. It's got to choke pretty good, so you know he wants it. Okay. Oh, three casts in a row in the middle. This is a good one here. <laughs> There, three casts in a row on a vibrating jig out in the middle of the bay. One fish could be a fluke, two fish you never know. Three casts in a row, I think that's telling a person something. So, so where are you gonna cast next? In the middle. In the middle? Okay. That's a good one. Up again. Well, it might be. But we won't know until you get some casts up in that middle there. Oh, there, oh, all in the middle. Oh, it's a nice one. Got the spot lock again. He's gonna hoist him right in. Yep. <laughs> nice. Okay, give her some line. Okay, now that's on a swim jig. So I think what the deal is, is it doesn't matter swim jig or vibrating jig, it's cast out in the middle of the bay. That one's got the spark shed on the back. Four inch green pumpkin. Nice fish. Okay, back up a little bit, right there. Okay, like that. The water's got a little tint to it. It's usually clear. We had some ripping wind the last few days. And it's got everything churned up a little bit. The water here four days ago was mid 50s and today it's 63.9 64 degrees that's a huge warm-up these fish have been waiting weeks for it to happen and it's finally here well i'm getting farther there nice one does it feel big feels decent 
an okay fish. Oh, we should get some fish in this. Anytime there's a little bit deeper water in a bay like this, there will be fish that gravitate towards it. You're casting that really, really good. <laughs> you like that reel? Yeah. I don't know if I even know how to work the other one now. <laughs> I've spent so much time on this one. And I got caught from the back. Wow. Logan has taken that new elite casting reel and absolutely bomb casting a swim jig. And he hasn't had a backlash for like 45 minutes, if that. So we thought we had him on a pattern out in the middle. And after that flurry of four or five fish, it just kind of slowed down. So we're just gonna pick a spot up here and get back on the shoreline. Get up here a little further so you can cast kind of side. Huh? Oh, there's one. Oh. That one I was slowly cranking that vibrating jig in. Oh. That's a healthy fish right there. <laughs> Bulgan, we're sitting right here. Why don't you grab your rod quick and fire right over towards that stick? Okay. A lot of times those little sticks that are sticking up have a have a fish by them. Bomb cast them and reel. Yep. Now know where you are so then the next time you kind of try to mix it up a little bit. Right now, I'd say they're preferring that vibrating jig a little more than the swim jig. And there's days where that happens. After a fish or two, it's hard to say, but when it gets to be five, six fish, then I would be tying on another vibrating jig. There's a lot of dark up there. Oh, there's one. Oh, that's a really nice one. There. They're definitely more on that vibrating jig than a straight swim jig. So I think we're gonna see if the difference, we're gonna put a vibrating jig on Logan's rod, see what happens. I can handle catching some more of these. <laughs> oh, you're real, you're owning that thing today. Yep. Fish, keep your rod up. Oh, it's so weird though. It doesn't feel like a bass. Oh, it's a it's a bass. So Logan put on the vibrating jig and what what happens? He, he gets a nice fish. So I think we proved that between the swim jig and the vibrating jig, right this afternoon in the 64 degree water, this is definitely the bait to be using. Without even a question. It stays light. Nice job. Logan's hooked up again. Nice. Yep, bring him right in. There you go. 
Nice. <laughs> what do you want to keep throwing? A vibrating jig or a swim jig? A vibrating bit. <laughs> Absolutely. There's smoke in that thing. Nice job. <laughs> what a fun afternoon. Right. So we got to head home now, but man, that was that was 2 to 3 hours of a bass <laughs> blitz. Especially once we figured out the fish. And what would you say was the best bait this afternoon? A vibrating bait. Definitely. But, yeah. We started with that swim jig and a vibrating jig and it was pretty much six to one at least on the vibrating jig. It doesn't take a really smart person to figure out after a few fish, switch it up, start doing the same thing. Um, and how are you working it? Um, I would just reel it and then once it stopped vibrating you just like jerk it. And then you it stopped vibrating a lot of times it was because it was so shallow it hit the bottom or right. you just kind of pump it quick and then get it to start thumping on the boat on the rod again right. and a lot of times that triggers the fish you know it stops it stops and then you jerk it fast not only is it moving quick but that blade starts thumping and the fish mm -hmm. get excited especially if they're following it and they're not going to hit it as soon as that starts jerking away from them bam they just hammer it we're using a lightweight one here. I believe this is a quarter ounce. And you have to when you're up in that two to three feet of water, it's just gonna bury right into it. So, um, super fun day. And one thing that I noticed, and especially as a dad, when you take a kid out fishing, it's hard to put a bait caster in their hands and not have issues, no matter what their skill level is. And Logan, he fishes a lot, he's good with the reel. But this new Daiwa casting reel, unbelievable. Um, one set of dials on the side here, and when he's got it set between four and six, it's basically 100 plus casts before he has any issue at all with a bait, uh, backlash. And even then, that braking system slows it down and it's not even bad. So um, I've fished a lot of years. He's fished a lot of years with me. And since we got these this spring and put them on our vibrating jig and our swim jig, it's made a world of difference. We can just both be firing side by side, bomb casting, and just fishing and not worrying about untangling reels. So um, super impressed. Definitely gonna buy some more of these reels. This one here was a 7.1 gear ratio, 6.7 ounces, super light. It makes your rod just feel so nice and easy to fish with. It's got the T-wing system up here for the, the line to come through. Um, just a super fun reel to fish with. And I know the next time you go, you're probably gonna grab the rod with one of these on it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Until next time, this is Casey. And I'm Logan. And we're part of Bass Ball Outdoors. Hope to see you on the water, and good luck if you get out. <laughs>